Moments ago on this program, you heard Senator Jeff Sessions defend Donald Trump's call for a temporary ban on Muslim refugees coming to America. My next guest, Amazar, is worried about the plan. His parents were refugees and he takes issue with this type of rhetoric. Make your case, Amma. Go. Well, I mean, look, banning Muslims is not going to stop, for instance, what happened in Orlando. This kid was born in America. His parents actually came from Afghanistan at a time when the United States government was allies with Afghanistan. So, I mean, this kind of idea that banning a whole group of people is going to solve these very complex political problems internationally is really ridiculous. The whole discourse on it is ridiculous. And a lot of the stuff he said wasn't true. I mean, when we were talking about these issues about radical Islam and banning and all these kinds of things, Senator Jeff Sessions says, why can't we say it? if King Abdullah of Jordan says it. Well, the truth is he doesn't say it. When King Abdullah of Jordan talks about ISIS, he talks about them as outlaws, as people that are outside any acceptable bounds of Islam, not people that are within something acceptable that we need to figure out how to deal with and therefore label them as Muslim. So this whole discourse is out of bounds. Why can't we put a temporary ban in place whilst we figure out exactly who it is that's coming to this country. <laughs> now, it's not a because question of whether, whether the, the Orlando shooter was, came to this country or not. It's a question of we ought to know precisely who is coming to this country. And in the case of the it, Syrian refugees who are coming in now, we don't know everything about them. I mean, is it too much well, to that, ask that's not that true. we just, I mean, we're being attacked here. 49 dead well, that, in Orlando that, alone. Is it too much to ask Stuart. that we just hold on a minute and figure out who is coming in and who we want in. Stuart, when, 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 you, when you make those kinds of decisions, you're assuming, number one, that people that are Muslim are more prone to criminalism than, than otherwise. Second of all, there is about an 18 to 24 month vetting process before refugees make it in here already. That's the way it works. When Donald Trump says they're just flowing in, that's a lie. Right now, so far, there's been less than 4,000 refugees from Syria that have even made it in. But the problem is we are now operating in a discourse in which we are accepting the idea. Look, if you accept the idea that Islam is at war with Christianity in the West, then guess what? ISIS agrees with you. And if you accept the idea that ISIS is somehow some sort of accurate representation of Islam or within any acceptable bounds of Islam, well, guess what? The vast majority of the Muslim world doesn't agree with you, and ISIS does agree with you. So we, we cannot operate in this discourse anymore. It's Alan, racist. We, it's disgusting. We, we cannot continue with this current level of political correctness. We cannot be it's so... It's not about political wait, wait correctness. We cannot be so sensitive to Muslims that we allow terrorists it's not sensitive to operate. this that that's exactly no, we, what's we, going on look at the case we, of, uh, uh, look at look, no. look at Mr. Mateen. his employer mm -hmm. knew that he was making outrageous statements and bullying his co-workers in right. the workplace but he didn't do anything right. well, about these, it because he was scared to do it anything because he was a muslim Right, so these are bu no, no, no. These are bureaucratic and structural failures, and these are maybe intelligence failures, but these are not failures that happen because we're including Muslims in our community. It's un-American. It's ridiculous. It's racist. It's disgusting, and we have to stop it. Trump, with all this rhetoric that he's saying, I mean, he thinks now a ban on Muslims would have avoided something in Orlando. With the way he talks, he's going to get someone killed in this country, and it's ridiculous. We need to stop this rhetoric now. We need to stand against it. Now, the president today implied, suggested obliquely, that Donald Trump and his viewers were partly responsible for the recent uh, terror attack. You agree with that? No, I wouldn't agree with that, but I would agree that he could be responsible or partly responsible for any backlash that happens against our community. There have already been three people in America, at least, who have either vandalized or threatened to bomb mosques, who have said either that they're Trump supporters or that they'd be happy to do it because Trump might pardon them one day. That's the kind of atmosphere he's creating. It's racist. It is xenophobic. It is going to lead to somebody really getting hurt. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read to you just a, a, tr a, a tweet from Donald Trump. Just received it. I'll read yeah, to you please don't re respond. Okay. He says, okay. um, Trump said, the president, Mr. Obama, claims to know our enemy, and yet he continues to prioritize our enemy over our allies, and for that matter, the American people. And he added, when I am president, it will always be America first. Your response, sir. I and mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, I'm no great defender of Barack Obama, but I will say this. The idea that a president would be prioritizing uh, uh, ISIS over Americans is just 
like it's ridiculous it doesn't even deserve a response but what we do know is that changing the name changing the way we talk, what does he think do you guys think that president obama is bombing the wrong places he's bombing the wrong countries because he's not calling it radical islam do you think that they don't know who they're fighting against because they're not calling it radical islam it's ridiculous the idea that by adding this correct term of, of islam to everything that these guys do would somehow make our fight against them more accurate or more effective is just completely out of bounds it's, it's ridiculous okay. uh, i just want to correct myself it wasn't a tweet it was a report from the ap one more thing Ara. Okay. you wrote a book yeah. being palestinian makes me smile that yeah that's right <laughs> okay that book was found in martin's apartment does that trouble yeah. you in any way now look, I'm, look, as you might know and as your viewers might know, I'm a performer, I'm a comedian as well, and I go around the country, I perform at all kinds of Palestinian events around the country, and I sell 50 to 100 books at every event. Apparently his wife, Omar Mateen's wife, is Palestinian. They were at some conference that I was performing at a year and a half ago, and they bought a book. From what I saw from the book that was there, it wasn't even signed to him. It was signed to somebody else, not even his wife. So I don't know how it ended up there, but I mean, obviously, I look, I encourage people to read my book. Nothing in it even for a crazy person, would encourage anybody to do something like what he did. It's ridiculous. All right, we hear you. Thanks very much indeed to Amazar for joining us. Thanks, today. Stuart. Yes, sir.